In this video, I am going to share four interesting ways on how we can use Google Slides in our online classes. I think most of us use Google Slides in creating presentations for academic lessons. I created one recently, which I am now showing on the screen. Aside from this kind of presentations, Google Slides can be used in so many other ways. And in this video, I am going to share four of them. I am going to show you some examples that I use in my online classes. If you think this video is helpful, please show your support by pressing the like button. Please consider subscribing to my channel too and press the notification bell to be informed when I upload a new video. Now let's start with my list of interesting ways to use Google Slides. The first in my list is creating an adventure like learning stations in Google Slides. Here are some of what I created recently. They are as follows, catching a flight, virtual race, and Christmas getaway themes. And for today, I will show you how this works using the Let's Play Detective Learning Stations. As we can see, there are four stations. The objective is to accomplish all the things required in every station. I will click the Present button to play. When Check In button is clicked, it will go to the Attendance form. When collect info button is pressed, the student shall jot down notes from the video lesson they are going to watch. This can be a reading material too. When students reach the knowledge check, several questions will be asked using a form for him to assess if he really understood the lesson. The last station is called reflect. Here, students will assess himself if he understood the lesson. This form will also get students feedback about the material. To share this interactive slide to students, I will click the File tab, then select Publish to the Web option. On the pop-up box, I will click the Publish button and confirm by pressing the OK button. I will copy the link that I will share with my students. Suppose I am the student. I will just simply open a browser, then paste in the address bar the link shared by the teacher. If you want a step-by-step -step procedure on how this learning station is created, you may watch my previous video which link is included in the description below. Please check that out after watching me here. Let's proceed to the next. The second use is for individual activity. This activity has a drag-and-drop object technique and click to add text placeholder. Let us first see how this will be used by students. As we can see, there are four required components in this slide. Let me start by typing in my name. Then, as the instruction says, I need to drag the letter to form the name of a Philippine government agency responsible for IT programs. Then, I have to define it. Finally, I will drag the correct logo of that agency to the logo box. However, there are items here that may be mistakenly dragged or moved by students. Therefore, we need to identify which should be included in the movable objects and which are the ones to be part of the locked objects. First, let's identify those that students should be able to move or edit. These letters will be tracked by students. I will press and hold the control key on my keyboard then select each one of the letters. I will move them first outside the slide. These images should be movable too, so I will select all of them, then move them outside the slide too. For now, I will delete these text placeholders. Now that I have the items that are supposed to be fixed, I will click the File tab, select Download, then choose PNG Image. Next, I will click the Insert tab, then select Insert New Slide. I will delete the existing placeholders. I will click the background tool, press the choose image button, then drag the downloaded PNG image to the pop-up. We just created a slide that has fixed objects in it. I will go back to the first slide, copy all the letters, then paste them to the second slide. 
I will move them to the correct color. I will do the same for the images. Here's what we are going to do for the text placeholders. I will click Insert, then choose New Slide. I will copy the placeholder that has a label, click to add text, then paste it to the second slide. I will press Ctrl D to duplicate, then move the duplicate to the definition area. I will adjust its size. In these three slides, only the second slide is needed to be shared with students. So I will select the second slide, click the File tab, choose Make a Copy, and click Selected Slides option. I will rename it, then click the OK button. At this point, only the objects that students need to manipulate are movable and can be edited. To share this with my students, I will click the Share button Under the Get Link area, I will choose anyone with a link with viewer access. Then I will click the Done button. I will go to the address bar, then replace the word Edit with Copy. I will highlight the URL and copy it. This link will be sent to my students for them to have a copy of it and work on this task. Suppose I am the student. I will paste the link in the address bar. On this page, I will click the Make a Copy button. This will make a copy of the file to students' Google Drive. Here, I can answer based on the lesson discussed. Now, to share this with my teacher or classmates, I will press the Share button. Under the Get Link area, I will choose anyone with the link and view. I will copy the link and will share it to the teacher. And that's how we create a drag and drop activity. Here's tip number three. If your Google Meet doesn't have built-in breakout rooms, then this workaround will help you. In this use of Google Slides, teachers should go to calendar.google.com. Then create events. In each event, be able to click the Add Google Meet Video Conferencing button. This will create the Google Meet link that we are going to copy. Going back to the slide, select the Google Meet image, go to the Insert Link tool, paste the link to the box, then click the Apply button. For example, when this is clicked, a new tab will be opened where the students can join the breakout room meeting. Do the same for the other three groups. Once done inserting link for each slide, I will share this link with students. Go to the Share button. Under the Get Link area, select anyone with a link and edit. Each student should have editor access here because they are expected to write their names in the table. Now let's move to the next use. The next tip can be used when starting a new lesson or this can also be used when reviewing before an exam. The teacher can ask for specific students to answer or he can use the audience tool in the presenter view to get answers from each student. What is this audience tool? Kindly watch my previous tutorial which link is included in the description box of this video to know more about it. I will press the present button to start. To know the instruction, click the How to Play button. To reveal the question, click the circle with number. This will be answered logically, so we are going to start with number 1 up to number 9. To give a hint what the question will be, 
category is on top of each column. If at the end of the game there is a tie, click the tiebreaker button to show the tiebreaker question. I hope this video gave you an idea on other uses of Google Slides for online classes. If you have other uses that you would like to add in my list, please comment it down below. We will greatly appreciate it as it will surely help all of us. If this has been helpful, please share this to your friends too. They might be in need of this information right now. Thank you for your support.